Can everybody really walk through today's video? Today's video, if you guys saw with the previous video, we took apart the MP231 transfer case. And in this video, we've already created the six gear planetary. I got all the parts to install the 1.25 inch chain, which is gonna make this transfer case for the LS swap a lot stronger than the OEM transfer case already was. So let's get started. Not sure if this is going to be a one part or two part series, probably going to break it up into two parts just to make it more simple. All right, before we get started on this rebuild, this is the rebuild kit I picked up, MP231, master rebuild kit, comes with seals, gaskets, everything to basically cover your MP231. You got these fine little bearings right here, which are nobody's friend to change out. Got a new transfer case chain as well. As I said before, we're doing the one and a quarter inch swap on this. So let's start off with the planetary. Now to pull that bearing out, you're gonna need a blind hole puller. We got the blind hole puller set up, ready to pull that bearing out. Pulled her out. So we got the new bearing. We might as well install that right now. So I'm gonna put it on the vise. I'm gonna use this bushing driver to install the bearing. So I just put my bearing in. This is the driver. I mean, use some common sense. You know, don't go don't go just beating it in, just nicely tap it in. I mean, if you have a press, by all means, press it in. Press it in is probably the better choice. But most people probably won't have that option. And I'm pretty flush there. So the easiest way to get that snap ring is to rotate it to the hole right there. And it's easy to get it out. Stick my screwdriver in, slide it around as so, right? Pull this aside. Take that off. This is what we're swapping out. Pull your sun gear out. There's one on the bottom. You can pre-lube them with oil. I got this assembly lube. I'm just gonna use on it. And then I'm gonna stick that one in the slot. Take my sun gear, slide her in. Make some more assembly lube. That way we're lubricated. Put that on top. Uh, so, put my top ring back on, put my special snap ring, start on one end, snaps in with your finger. This thing to do is start at one side of the case and work along, so we got a little snap ring right there we could pop out and then this bearing is just going to pop out the front. We could probably just use a tool to press it out. Or, you use a seal bearing driver and knock her out. There we go. Pull that clip out. Now flip this over. That's just going to come right out the back between the housing and there. So I can tap the bearing out that way. She comes out. Keep that bearing aside because you're going to need it. And it's the same with this one here. This one here is a little different, so I'm going to 
open up the vise. Wide enough so I can set that on and tap that bearing out from the inside. Thing like that should be able to tap her out. Should just come straight back. Just like that. There's our new bearings. And they're both going to be installed from the opposite side. So we need to flip this around and set her up. So putting the new bearings in, your driver you want to be as close to the same size as the bearing so that you hit it in on the outside race. Same with this, that's why I got that big one. And I'm gonna put some I'm gonna put some grease in this before we tap her in. Before I put that bearing in. I wanna give her some lube. She's a little dry. Use some assembly grease there. Instead, just gently tap it. This one sits in a groove. So you know where you have it in far enough when the snap ring groove is exposed and this one here is tapped down to the outer ring is touching there against the base of the transfer case once you got it in place Put that snap ring. It's probably gonna fight you to the death. There we go, we're snapped into place. Now this seal's gonna be a little bit tricky because it has a lip. So I'm gonna put it in now because this front gear that we're using doesn't have a snap ring like the one that we took out. It's actually held in place by the yoke. So I got my brass hammer here. So I'm just gently gonna tap around the edges and hopefully get it in without damaging it. going around Perfect. now comes our favorite job of putting the planetary in we all know how that's gonna go that part's gonna slide in pretty easy but then getting that snap ring on gonna be another story now hopefully we don't drop it come on I'm on so I'm just tapping her as we're Getting it in place out there. Planetary set in there. Got the room for the snap ring now. Trying to get that snap ring back on, but it's probably easier to get it on than it is trying to get it off. Gotta be careful on the seal surface. 
so close. And use a screwdriver here. Oh, snapped in by itself. Look at that. We are locked in place. So what we got here is a double lip seal. Punch it through either side. I'm just gonna punch it out and then put the new one in. Now use common sense. Don't get too crazy. You don't want to start beating it and then ruin your face so I got my double lip seal right here what I'm gonna do set it there put my hammer up there ideally try to want this to go in as flat as possible so I'm gonna get a larger die here just so I can make sure I don't accidentally go farther than I have to there we are set in place we need to put some silicone on there and we learned from before you don't get too crazy because the more you get it's just gonna end up around that bearing hole so what I'm gonna do is a little bead like that and take my finger and then smear it around kind of flatten it out perfect now while I got this, we're going to do the bolts, right? I'll put some silicone on the bolts. Because we've got the threads to the thing. So if we don't have some sort of sealant on there, there's a possibility we could leak through the threads. And that would not be good. This can only go on one way. That little cavity to that bearing hole. And now... I want to put some assembly grease on that shaft. Put some assembly grease. We'll make sure that that seal does not go on dry because that would not be good. And we're going to take this nice, easy pressure down straight. In we go. Put the bolts in. Gun on number two. And then I like to go around afterwards with a wrench. You can torque them if you want, but I just use common sense. You know, aluminum thread, steel bolt. Good chance if you don't know what you're doing, you could strip it out. So once it stops, probably a good idea that you don't force it. For this piece right here, put the rubber o-ring in first. And then there's this little plastic bushing that goes in there as well. As such. So what we're going to do now is work on the shift forks before we install them remove these plastic pieces and change them out on uh, this one here some of them have already fallen off because they've been brittle and broken while you're doing your rebuild kit it's absolutely must to change these out because if you have issues with rough shifting it's probably a pretty good chance that some of these have broke off so we're going to start the assembly and the kit comes with new plastic but before you try to remove them you got to make sure you got the right pieces this kit does not have the right ones they're the wrong size but it is what it is so before we can put that in 
we need to put our shifter in and the teeth go towards where the detent ball is, which is right down there. So just kind of feed that through as such. And we just inserted the O-ring in that on the other side so there's a good chance that uh, it may pop out while we're doing this. So we got that in there. Then we're gonna put this in there let's get this inside you want to make sure it's in the shifter selector now this one here pretty much has all those plastic pieces broken off so the new kit does have new ones so we're gonna push one new plastic piece on there one of the other new ones goes on the back side there we need to get this piece off still still stuck on there so use some pliers that come on don't be so stubborn so we can actually put that in there as well so slide that Slide it into the hole as such. Come all the way down. Like that. Gonna leave it there for right now. All right, now we got slip yoke eliminator. Put our sprocket on. Slide this piece over top. And you know it's installed right where you can see the snap ring groove. And get your snap ring ready. Use the screwdriver, tap it in place, we're in. Just gonna throw the shifter on. It's got a stover, but when you're tightening it, you need to kind of use some common sense. Kind of want to take up the play, but you don't want to go so tight that it's rubbing and it's hard to shift. So we're good right there. Tighten her up. Getting to be almost done. And you see right there. And then my slip yoke eliminator. Fit in just like that. Now one thing try not to forget when you're reassembling it is the spring. Spring is pretty important. All right, everybody, with all that being said, I think I'm gonna end the video here. A little bit more than half done rebuilding the transfer keys, but at this point in time, I feel that if I did it all in one video, people would lose interest and disappear. So that's why I'm gonna break it up into two videos and we can focus more on the content. So we got most of the back half put together we still need to swap over the electrical switch from the jeep to the chevy t case uh slip yoke eliminator um, all those other parts to make this work with my ls swap in my jeep anyways i'm gonna get going 
If you guys have any questions or comments, post them below. If you're not subscribed already, I suggest you do so. Follow me while I do the LSTJ swap. I'll talk to you guys later.